to the Avamar Virtual Edition Configuration Demonstration. This demonstration will cover the new, simplified procedure of installing and configuring an Avamar Virtual Edition. This demonstration will show the installation onto a VMware environment. Hyper-V and Azure installations are similar. When installing onto a VMware environment, Avamar Virtual Edition is distributed as an OVF or OVA file. This file must be imported into the system. The OVF file contains a base virtual machine. This machine contains a virtual disk that has been preloaded with Avamar software. Depending on the capacity of AVE that you plan to deploy, more disks, memory, and CPU will need to be added afterward. To deploy the AVE virtual machine, give it a name and choose a location and host for it to reside in. Select a data store for the virtual machine's hard disk. It is recommended that the data store uses RAID 1 or RAID 10 storage. It is also recommended to create the virtual disk with the thick provisioning, lazy zeroed option. Review the settings and deploy the virtual machine. Once the virtual machine has been deployed, it needs to have virtual disks added for storage. The amount and size of disks depend on the capacity addition. In this demonstration, we will deploy a 0.5 terabyte AVE. Edit the virtual machine settings and add a new hard disk. The hard disk must be 250 gigabytes with a thick provisioned lazy zeroed option. Be sure that it is stored on a data store with enough capacity. For disk mode, set it to independent and persistent so that the disks are not affected by VMware snapshots. The 0.5 terabyte virtual edition requires a total of three disks, each of them 250 gigabytes in size. Each disk should use the same options as seen previously. For some of the larger capacity AVEs, the amount of memory and CPU may need to be increased. The 0.5 terabyte AVE can use the default settings. Once the virtual hardware has been configured, the AVE is ready to be powered on. So far, the installation process has been very similar to previous versions of Avmar. However, the upcoming process is greatly simplified. Once the VM has booted up, log in as the root user. On the first login, it will open up a new network configuration menu. From this menu, change the IP configuration, provide an IP address and subnet, a default gateway, and return to the main menu. Then, change the DNS information, provide name servers, and a host name, and exit the menu. NTP can also be configured if needed. When finished, apply the changes and exit the Network Configuration menu. Networking is now configured on the Avamar Virtual Edition. The rest of the configuration is done through a web interface. Open a browser to the AVE's hostname, followed by slash avi slash aviGUI.html, and log in as root user. The AVE config package is preloaded onto the system. Click to install it. This package allows initial configuration options to be set. Provide connect EMC information, account passwords, customer contact info, and a time zone. When ready, click save and continue. The configuration will take approximately 30 minutes to complete. Afterwards, the Avamar Virtual Edition is successfully installed. This concludes the